right, that's enough of that. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'd vibe out for a while and forget where I was and what I was doing. Uh, I, you know, I probably got to stop doing that shit. If I keep using shit like uh, John Carpenter and, uh, you know, whatever else I've been using. I think I use a little Justin Hurwitz on one of the podcasts. I'm never going to be able to get by on that whole copyright thing. And then you're not going to be able to hear me on Spotify or iTunes. Maybe I should think about changing it. Maybe not. Who knows? Ellis Cinema here with another review. Um, to a film, I am sure all of you have been clamoring to see. And not only that, but just uh, waiting on pins and needles uh, to hear me talk about it. And, uh, of course, that is the film Stan and Ollie. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, <laughs> Stan, Stan, you guys didn't see that one? No? I'm talking to you, of course. No? Well... That's too bad, because it was a delightful film. Uh, Stan and Ollie, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's a biopic uh, directed by uh, John Baird, uh, written by Jeff Pope, starring uh, John C. Riley as Oliver Hardy and Steve Coogan as Stan Laurel. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't know of Laurel and Hardy, um, they were a comedic duo in the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever. Uh, golden age of Hollywood, if you will. Um, I thought they were hilarious. Most people, at least my age, they're growing up, you know, Aladdin, fucking Lion King. And I, I was watching that shit too, but my dad's a fucking crazy person. I also watched a lot of Abbott and Costello and uh, 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 Laurel and Hardy. So, uh, anyway, kind of comedic slap slapstick duo. Um, this film kind of follows uh, towards the end of their career. It's more of a behind the scenes with you know some peppers of their uh, peppered with their act here and there. It was more of the uh, behind the scenes. Um, everybody's already turned out. I am not going to listen to you talk about a comedic duo, a movie about uh, comedic duo from the 30s and 40s. Well, those that are sticking with me, I promise you, you'll be some, well, maybe not in life. I, I'm not promising anything. I, I learned a long time ago. You just don't make promises. Can't, can't write checks. Your ass can't cash. You feel me? Um, I personally liked Abbott and Costello a little bit more. They were uh, in that, and that's no disrespect to, uh, Laurel and Hardy. Uh, they were more of a, uh, subtle, um, occasionally more dry uh, sense of humor than uh, Abbott and Costello, which was obviously, for those of you that don't know, the, really over the top. They were um, 40s, 50s, 60s. They kind of almost torch pass, if you will. And it not... Anyway, I just happened to like the over the top because I was a kid. You know, everybody else watching normal stuff. Are You Afraid of the Dark, which I did watch. But, you know, I was also fucking Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Fucking all-timer for me. Um, anyway, so this follows <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. Uh, I, I can't express to you if, if just what, how delightful it was if you were a fan of the duo, because you kind of got to see, um, some of the trials and tribul. I hate it when people say trials and tribulations. It just seems like such a combat. Anyway, you kind of see what it was like, um, in old Hollywood as far as uh, making deals with, you know, agents, producers, so on and so forth. And um, the movie starts with them basically, you know, nearing the end of filming one project and um, Stan, Stan Laurel, played by Stevie Coogan, Steve Coogan, uh, wants to negotiate a deal, get uh, more money, um, and also own their pictures. And uh, they had, I think, I believe they had different agents at the time. And uh, long story short, uh, Oliver, uh, Oliver Hardy, uh, played by John C. Riley, um, had a couple more pictures under his, uh, the previous management that he was under, and uh, Stan was trying to, like, put this deal into play right now. And uh, ultimately, it ends up with them breaking up. 
for an extensive period of time because um, Oliver Hardy didn't want to, um, you know, break a deal that he had previously negotiated, and Stan Laurel didn't want to wait wait around. So uh, the world uh, knew of uh, Laurel and Hardy, and then they basically disbanded and. Um, we pick up, so that that's about the first 20 minutes of the film, and then we pick up, I believe, 16 years later. So now um, their fame and fortune is, or at least the fame part, uh, well, fortune, unfortunately, too, for the both of them, because they just weren't very good with their money, at least how I understand it, if there's any family members of either of two. I'm not, I, I don't know anything as far as, so don't, don't think that I'm just like spraying nonsense. It just from the film that I saw, which is a film. I, I understand that that is not uh, real life. From the film, it led me to believe that both kind of had their own vices. And I'm not talking, you know, fucking super serious stuff. I'm talking about spending money on the fucking dogs at the track, or you know, this, that, or the other thing. Anyway, so we pick up 16 years later, and um, you know, the fame portion is gone. That you know, that basically the the masses have um thought that uh they retired you know they're 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 just no longer around so um in an attempt to get another movie made uh stan uh puts together kind of a little tour to kind of get a little uh you know uh notoriety back if you will and it's um they do a tour in England and uh, Ireland, blah, blah, blah. Um, but to generate some buzz, they they do kind of a little, they take their tour on the road, so to speak, and uh, with the money that they put together for um, uh, what they sell at the, at the particular shows, uh, they will use to back uh, a project that uh, Stan uh, has been working on. Stan Laurel wrote the majority of the material I, I had heard that prior to the film that he had wrote um, the majority of all all their bits and a lot of their dialogue and whatnot so if you want to say the genius behind but I mean you know you can't have one without the other I mean it definitely takes uh, in this particular situation it's magic between the both of them but um, Stan Laurel wants to make the Robin Hood um, basically with the gags of Laurel and Hardy. Um, so they do the tour and, uh, they want to use that money buzz, you know, public appearances to, uh, get back to the, they weren't trying to get back to the top. I think they just wanted to make another picture. I, uh, from what you gathered, uh, that in the 16 years, they didn't really talk, uh, I, uh, both, at least in the film, uh, uh, resented each other for the decisions they made. Uh, obviously, Stan Laurel just going ahead and doing what he wanted to do with his uh, picture deal with Fox and Oliver Hardy wanting to stay true to the deal he already no- negotiated, and they hadn't spoken in quite some time, so they were very angry. But I think there's a different level of respect. Back in the day, we don't need to get in that, so ultimately they come back together, but there's still... Um, those feelings there. Now, uh, Oliver Hardy is very, very old at this point. Uh, well, they're both, uh, I don't want to say very, very old, but they're both old enough to the point where they can't, that whole, you know, especially those who uh, work in Hollywood, I mean, it's it's a grind. I can tell you, it is a grind from uh, sun up to sundown, and they, both of them just can't do that anymore, even though they both want to. Um so you kind of get that study of them. And I just want to say both of them absolutely fucking knocked it out of the park. I think my favorite part of the film was just how subtle they played everything. Like it wasn't like, Hey, this is who I'm standing and Ali are. And we're, you know, we're goofballs, goofball, goofball. There was, it was way more human than that way more, uh, behind the scenes and who they were as people. And, and kind of, you know, where they start, where they end. And I think that's what makes it such a delightful, dare I say, beautiful movie, just because of the subtlety at which the characters are played. And both of them absolutely knock it out of the park. And I just like to say before, and I'm going to try to find this on the spot, it's a hell of a lot easier when you have <coughs> um, <clears throat> somebody else to uh, talk so that I can look this shit up. But I just want to say 
the makeup department, whoever did the prosthetics for Oliver Hardy, I think it was Mark uh, Coulier or Coulier, if you will. Um, uh, I thought I was looking at Oliver Hardy. It was, it was, and 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 that's also a testament to one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood, which is John C. Riley. And at not a as not a huge. Um, fan of Stevie Coogan. Steve Coogan. I keep saying Stevie Coogan because I, I listen to the commentary of uh, Tropic Thunder and Robert Downey Jr., whom does not break character du- during the commentary. The commentary, folks. The commentary. That just shows you how <laughs> Robert Downey is awesome. But um, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that there may have been some ill feelings between Robert Downey Jr. and Steve Coogan in real life because he kept on referring to him as little Stevie Coogan. <laughs> little Stevie Coogan acting like a pussy. He kept on saying in his uh, character from Tropic Thunder's voice. Um, but anyway, the uh, I'm not a huge fan of Steve Coogan. I have seen hours and hours and hours of Oliver uh, Laurel and Hardy and Steve Coogan absolutely fucking crushed. Absolutely crushed. They both did. Like it, I kind of thought when I was walking in, cause it's not, I don't know. I, I think sometimes actors these days, um, and it's just an artistic choice. I'm not shitting on it, but instead of it being a pr- impression, it's more like, well, this is <clears throat> my interpretation of that real person or whatever. So it, it was nice to see it because it, it wasn't it like like I said the the movie itself has bits where it is um, they they show um, kind of their their comedy act but most of it is like I said behind the scenes and it was nice to see just how well they um, emulated just just some of the mannerisms um, some of uh, Steve Coogan especially with the facial expressions you would have to nail um, if if you're playing Stan Laurel otherwise it, it doesn't work I mean we're talking about an age where you know most things are forbidden and it's a lot of physical humor and along with physical humor also is uh, in your face obviously um, so I just, what, if Joe was here, he'd say, shout out to the makeup department. That's what I'd like to say right now, but that's kind of Joe's Joe's line. Um, everybody just top to bottom, I thought, did a good job. The, the, the ladies who played um, the guy's wives were uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, Shirley Henderson played Lucille Hardy, and... Nina Arianda played Ida, and Ida was just a, a very, um, I, I want to say she was German, she was either German, Russian, Polish, one of the, <laughs> not, no, I'm not saying that they're all the same, I'm not saying that at all, I'm just saying that there were so many moments, I can't remember specifically where she was from, she fucking nailed it, uh, Nina uh, was awesome, and and so did uh, Shirley as as Lucille Hardy. I just I was I was blown away at how and there was a wonderful moment at the end. Um, like I had previously mentioned, uh, Oliver Hardy's getting sick at this point, and there's some. Uh, we do have an episode uh, where he, or I'm sorry, he has an episode with his heart, and uh, they have to stop the tour. Um, but there's a wonderful moment between the wives where um, you can tell. Oliver probably shouldn't do this uh, and this is towards the end of the film Oliver shouldn't do this dance number that he's about to do and uh, because of his heart first of all he, the doctor told him he shouldn't go back on tour and he said fuck that um, Stan's my friend and we're going we're gonna to see it till the end um, but once the wives both because obviously they, they were really close friends as a comedy do you have to be the wives um, notice that they are going to do the dance number and, you know, dance or not.